Take a pause in between each one so you can be lounging and then let them eat cake. She never said let them eat cake. I know she didn't, right? That was unfairly reported. The power of the propaganda machine is such that even the late 18th century propaganda against that woman still has potency today. Still. And Sophia, it will be interesting, um, the book was written and now Sophia is making her beautiful film. And it will be interesting to see whether anything can dismantle that propaganda that has condemned her uh, since she was a young woman. She was the first victim of, of bad PR, you know. Uh, they, they hadn't really sussed out PR. In fact, the revolutionaries, they were very good at it because a lot of the... The, the lies about Marie Antoinette. I mean, and some of them were true, but they, they exaggerated things. You know, the famous line about the let them eat cake, which she never uttered, but it but was in kind of caricatured cartoons that the revolutionary propagandists would put about, and that had a heavy influence on public opinion. <laughs> And then Kirsten, yeah, one with a little smile, like it amuses you. The... Okay. And action. Let them eat cake. And you can't be bothered for taking a bath. And action. Let them eat cake. That's <laughs> good. And more of an, or an order, it's so obvious. And don't bother me. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> fine. And then, like, it's a no brainer. Okay. There's plenty of cake around. Let them eat cake. She tells us a story from the past with a, such a conscience of our present. That she is not a, 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 is not a representation of uh, the style of the 18th century. Is she puts that 18th century is our real today? Period films are, are are always a delight in that regard. But sometimes they can be a little starched and a little weighty, and that's that's where where Sophia and, and, and every department comes in. Um, there, it's 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 a fresh look at, at, at another time. Well, what advice did you give Sophia before she started? I I I, I told it. I told her to make it totally the way she wanted, and the more personal it was, and the more it was her impression of what all this was like. That the better it would be that she should just be throwing a Marie Antoinette party and invite everyone to come to it in costume. I keep feeling like we're making a superhero movie in this scene. Doesn't a Pontiac look like the Green Hornet? all the superheroes in their disguise at the Gotham City Ball. Hi, do we say it's plus five? We're on uh, Ramon's list. I adored the look of it, and I was thinking this is something film can do that I can never do. I can write page after page describing the beauty of Versailles, the beauty of Marie Antoinette, the wonderful clothes of Madame Berta, the jewels. I can write and write and write, but I'll never do what Sophia or someone could do just with a look, you know. It's so much stronger, the look of the clothes, than anything I could ever write. I mean, I think that's one of the great advantages of film. It's so cool. <laughs> oh, those are great. Bit, I like the sort of the Austrian colors of the green and the gray. Yes, it really is nice. Marie Antoinette, you can do in many, many ways. 
the, the vision that Sofia had was very specific. She didn't, didn't want to go into the expected classical uh, uh, look, you know, so she asked me to come up with some other solution, what I call a stylization. Some of it is symbolic and some of it is stylish, but some of it is also um, psychological. So there is a psychological uh, uh, reason for a costume, for a color. So that's what I like. And so we tried to go with her vision. And, and that I think it's what one has to do as a costume designer. Hi, Melina, over. Melina here, over. I looked at the script and 38 should be a different day than 37. Yes, we're covered. Yeah, yeah. We have, we have a costume for it. Uh, 37 and another costume for 38. Over. Okay, but then can we use the strawberries again, or do you have another another one? Because I love seeing the strawberries in full length. Isn't it nice? It's yeah, it's really, really cool. Cool. What kind of other berries? It's your strawberry dress. Yeah. Maybe it's so cute. cute. That looks great, Melina. Like I love it. Getting into the clothes is such an important thing for me, because you put it on, you just like layer by layer kind of time travel a little bit. Just me putting on these kinds of clothes, they just change everything. Just physically, they kind of make you stand in a different way. The shoulders are tighter, your back goes up, your head goes up. They just do a lot of work for you. It does help to have the corset on, because then it felt like she was a little bird trying to get out of, uh, out of, these, out of all these restrictions. I wore my corsets for um, Versailles, and then as soon as we went to Petit Trianon phase, I didn't wear any corsets. I'm thinking about the best croissant you've ever had. I'm going to take full type to make a lot. You're more modest in nature. I understand that. <laughs> Modern. King of France and Ozzy Argento, the Italian, Madame du Barry, and we have a, a very mixed group. It just seemed like an eccentric place at that time, and. Um, so I think they give that flavor. When the camera comes between them, it's nice to see yeah, you looking look around. Every, every yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, I see you looking, looking at them. At them. Yeah, and then also looking around at the, um, okay. the weirdos. Yeah, that's good. And action. <laughs> this is France, your new home. You have to live with these people. Is there anyone you can relate to? It's your new family. I pictured Kirsten when I was working on it because I thought she, she's German, so she has the skin and the look of that character, but she has that quality where she can be fun and playful and charming, but then she also has more depth to her, so she can have both. I thought Kirsten Dentst was wonderful, and I thought that's absolutely the right face. That's exactly the kind of jawline and the prettiness, which is alluring, I thought that was a perfect physical match. And the grace, Marie Antoinette was so graceful. We know that. Everybody said she was so graceful. Kirsten Dutt's a very graceful person. So Mary, you, you've sent for her and now she's arriving. Mm -hmm. So this is the shot of her entering. And I'll come closer. Good luck, Mike. Did so? Okay. You know, my mother was an Austro-Hungarian aristocrat. In fact, thinking about her has helped me a lot. When Sofia says, be more cool, be more strong, think of your mother, I've got a whole background, 800 years back. <laughs> they, her family was started, they, they sort of started that long ago with Charlemagne. You're a great empress. It's great because she's intimidating, but there's warm, motherly warmth, too. I'm trying to get all of it. Yeah, you have. It's all in there. There's so much good the people of France have done for I think the point of the movie was taking a young person thrust into an intolerable situation, which she has no control of and doesn't really understand, and then 
thrown into another intolerable situation. I mean, how many people have been married for seven and a half years before the marriage is consummated? And if that does happen to them, they don't have the entire court outside the door, sort of looking through the keyhole. I mean, it was absolutely extraordinary, the things that happened to Marie Antoinette. And I think that is very well portrayed, that actually, first of all, she's sort of sold into slavery, really, to be a princess. Then she's supposed to support Austria when she's 14, 15. Then she's got this weird unconsummated marriage and she's supposed to produce a child, a baby. You know, she ha And given all of this, uh, I think Sophia shows very sympathetically how she sort of tried to cope th with this situation. And all the shopping and the extravagance and the decadence and all of that was a sort of reaction to these terrible things w which had happened to her, which were not of her making, really. And I think that like you, you want to be sweet, sweet to him, but you don't really want to try to start talking again because you don't want to be shut down. And, and you think that he doesn't like you because yeah. like, you tried last night and it didn't. He didn't. He rejected you. <laughs> Why doesn't he like you? I don't like myself. <laughs> But I don't think you're not mature enough to know that he's insecure, you know, you just think that... Right. <laughs> I guess the main objective when I thought about making a movie of her story was not to make a big historical epic. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, the biography is a huge story, and I wanted to really focus on trying to make um, more an impressionistic... Um, uh, telling from her point of view, really like what it, what it might have been like from her point of view, because so many of the stories we know about Marie Antoinette are people's perceptions of her, and, um, and the more I learned about uh, kind of her, what we know of what she went through, and then uh, imagine more of the personal side. She uh, wrote a, a phenomenal script, um, which I felt uh, was a very fresh way of looking at a, at a rather um, historic subject. Her script is her vision um, and her take on their story and I just kind of stop reading all the books and just go go by uh, go by the script. My brother and my dad do this thing that when they're talking to me in my room they they walk around and they and they look at things while they're talking and right. so I imagine it right. like that that you're kind of right. thing and looking at her and I like how you're kind of teasing her because that's your right. as a thing brother that's what okay. they, you do. Big win, big win. Big win. Yeah. Scoop him, scoop him. She has an eye, which is a which is a youthful eye, and um, in this particular version of Marie Antoinette, I think that um, candy is a, is, a, is a good way to to describe it, um, sexy candy. I like the fact that, that, that uh, Sophia's trying to make the story, uh, if you like, sort of um, resonant with with young people, with uh, kind of the younger generation. And she's trying not to make it a mannered sort of drama that has no relevance to people today. And cut. Just to make a variation, maybe we could do more of the look at the beginning of her coming at you. Okay. So we could kind of build up the standoff between the two gangs. Okay. <laughs> but you're a lady. Just, just the high school, the high school two clicks that don't like each other. Okay. Like here comes trouble. It looks like we're. Yeah, I can't see it again. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Yeah, like like swatting a mangy dog. <laughs> this is where Maria Antoinette really walked and really yeah. went. Is that amazing to think that she was really here? I know. Yeah, we look, look at our bedrooms right next door. Well, what I'm thinking is how interesting it is to be in the actual places where all these historical people actually had lived and had experienced the things that Sophia is now reconstructing.
amazing to think that marie antoinette and her husband walked through these halls and looked out and that that is versailles. when i found out that we were going to do this this project and that we were going to do it in paris or surrounding paris and that we would have access to versailles itself i uh, was i was very excited but the reality is they're museums and we had to show these museums as alive we could take advantage of large halls which would give the film scale but even there we would have to come in and put drapes in and completely furnish it we couldn't use any of the furniture of versailles uh, which gave us the task of bringing in furniture that looked appropriate and competitive with the scale that already existed on the walls. Got very lucky, had very creative decorating and art department team that pulled it off. We're in the uh, salon and with our drapes, our huge crew, our huge amount of extras, our set dressing has never been allowed before. They're hanging diffusion, they're hanging bounce boards and grip equipment in the middle of this. The head of Versailles, Monsieur Clément Arazzoli, said the reason I want to support this so much is because in Sophia's movie, she'll get inside the head of Marie Antoinette, and that's all I really care about. It's perfect. Very, very perfect. Oh, oh yes. We're excited to oh, be here. Yes. <laughs> Look at the keys. Yes, this is a big key. has the keys to the palace. Yeah, yeah the it's the key of the palace. Yeah, exactly. One of the parts of working in France that was so which added so much to the movie, I think, were all the people that worked on it that made the 18th century food. There's all this tradition that we needed for the movie, that the food that was made that they would have had at that time. I mean, it's so, so elaborate and over the top. And for me, it was fun to come to set and have a whole cake department, Lottery that makes macaroons with, to bring pastries every day. And it's just ridiculous, cute pink pastries that we had around for the set dressing. And I loved the the florist who would make these beautiful flower arrangements every day and kind of the whole palette of the movie is very cookies and cake kind of thing. I think it was the girliest film set I've seen. Sophia put together a, a, a tear sheet reference book of colors. I'd say, well, what's that picture about? And she said, oh, it's just that, that those green trees that are kind of faded or that, that person's shirt or there's a picture of uh, a bunch of macaroons that were yellow and brown and magenta, and she kept saying, well, this, this is the colors of the film. That's the palette. You should not take any of this seriously, and that's so, when so, you... So bring it to heel. Right? Yeah. <laughs> bring it to heel? Yeah. I've never heard that. Is that like a or training? It's what a horse? I sometimes do with women. Yeah. Bring it to heel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. <laughs> Milena, it's so nice to see all the colors of the macaroons in the room. Yeah. <laughs> is it, where is my pink? The pink. Yeah. Yeah. She really looks like a macaroon. Pistachio. Yeah. Citron. When I say that I see Sophia making a, uh, a candy version of, of Marie Antoinette, uh, what I mean is it's not a film that lacks depth. It just comes in a disguise of this sort of fluffy period with these tall wigs and rather superficial attitudes. But in the words of, of Oscar Wilde, um, only superficial people can't be superficial. I'll take these in the pink and in the blue. Oh, do you want these too? Oh. Well, I like them in the pink. The suggestion that you'd put yellow and, and magenta and mint green instead of the, uh, the primaries, the, the, the royal blue and the burgundy and the gold yellow, showed that it was skewed. Most of the paintings of the time that were, showed the strict court life were a bit mythical and you'd always find your, your red, your yellow, your blue in a perfect balance. And this didn't follow the, the want of our pastel world. So we kind of drained those colors out, avoided some. We said, oh, red, okay, we'll just use that for the old king. Try to avoid dark blue as much as possible. Try to avoid solids. Let's have patterns. And so this was shaking up what the real world was. And then we got into not wanting to show brown in the movie and not wanting to show bays. We didn't want the, the crustacean of sepia to say that we were in another time. We wanted to feel like we were living in this time, appreciating this time, and it just happened to be a document uh, that was a little bit richer because the paintings haven't faded yet. The photography hasn't faded yet. You're really there. 
and it was brighter than you see under years of smoky layers of varnish. And that also too stemmed from a lot of conversation I had with Soph in regards to like, you know, there's this kind of like, it's like how, you know, em embracing a kind of high key, brighter approach to lighting where it's much more pop, much more opened up, much brighter. And for me, it was really challenging because it's like, I've, I've never really lit that way. And to kind of get that and still have it feel texture and depth to it and not just turn into like TV lighting, you know, it was finding a balance there somehow. And I think it has to do with production design and wardrobe and everything coming together. But it seemed to be very appropriate for her when she was younger, especially. The film opens with her in Schönbrunn in Austria, and that, that has a little bit more of a moodier feel to it. We always wanted Austria to feel a little bit darker, a little, little moodier of a feel to it. But when she arrives into Versailles, you kind of come into this world of bright colors, Sherbert kind of colors. And that, to me, represented her whole youthful period in Versailles. She's kind of stuck within the confines of the protocol, and she's just learning about all those things. And then when she leaves and kind of breaks free from that in the Petit Trianon phase, which becomes more naturalist in a way, and I felt that with the photography, it still has a kind of bright opened up, but it's more wider lenses, closer, backlighting, flaring, and a little bit feeling somewhat of nature photography somehow. That's why I kept feeling like, referencing pictures of nature and flowers. And then the camera work itself, much looser, more handheld, that kind of feels like it's transitioning into this period of her life that's more like that. Which then in third act of the film, she ends up being back in Versailles. And now when you're back in Versailles at the end of the movie, it's a little bit more of a darker, more austere place. It, it relates to where she is in the story. Things begin to fall apart a little bit. So to me, there's somewhat obvious decisions that you could make with the script. It's a personal story set in a period piece and following that and letting that be a guide for how we did things. It's good that it's a little sloppy and not and not perfectly, you know, I didn't have an accent in the movie and all those things, all of that.